Hello folks, Librarian Matthew Smith here. Welcome to another Database Primer. In today's video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to Ovid Embase. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Now with all my videos, I like to start at Google just to make them as easy to follow as possible. And today, because Embase is really something that's going to be used by medical and health students, what we'll do is start by looking for UEA LibGuides. If I run my search, I should see something that looks like this. Now, because it's medical, I'm going to go straight for the quick link. If you're from a different department, you can go through the main link and then pick your particular discipline area. But we'll go with medicine as it's cropped straight up. So I click on medicine and I get a page that looks like this. Now, from here, I'm going to select databases and resources. This is the space where you can see all the different databases we have access to. And because we want Embase, I will limit this down to just E. Scroll down until I find, there we go, Embase. Now from here, all I need to do is click onto Embase and it will shunt me through, hopefully, to the front page. Embase is a little bit different to many databases you might access in that when you first arrive, what it will actually ask you to do is select which data you want to search. So for Embase, you will be searching on Ovid as the search platform and Ovid allows you to search different types of data. So the two key databases it has within here is Embase and Medline. There are other things that we subscribe to which aren't databases, but are searchable through Ovid. Because we're talking about Ovid Embase today, nice and simple, we tick the box for Embase, we scroll down and we click OK. And that sets us up ready to go. Now within Ovid, you've got several different search options. In fact, more than you're likely to see in many other places. However, like most databases, it starts you on the basic search and the same that I always say, you want to look for the advanced search. Now on Embase, that's actually a little more complex than in some other spaces. You'll see that we do have the advanced search option here, but in most databases, when we talk about advanced search, you're actually looking at a search that is more like what Ovid Embase would call multi-field search. So if I click on that, you'll hopefully see what I mean. I'll just zoom this out just a little bit. There we go. So the multi-field search option gives you multiple search boxes. If you've used the advanced search on the catalog or on most other databases, you'll be used to this kind of format. Multiple search boxes with drop downs that allow you to select which fields you want to search. Now that's great if you want to do that. In actual fact, in Ovid, whether you're searching Medline or Embase, I quite like the advanced search. Now if I bring this up, what you'll see is that you only have one search bar here and you don't have a drop down to limit to the particular field you want to search. So why do I prefer this? Well, one of the big advantages to Ovid as a platform is the level of control it gives you over your search. By using the advanced search, I'm going to build my search up one line at a time and I'm going to control exactly which fields are searched on each of those lines. I can then combine them together with ands and ors just as I would have done in my multi-field search where I have ands between the lines and then I would have typed ors within the boxes to put in my different terms. But if we go back to the advanced search, this is where I like to work within Ovid. So let's start with an example search just to give you a feel for what's likely to happen. Let's say I'm interested in the way medical students have fared with online learning during COVID-19. Let's pick that just as an example. What I will do is I will take each of those ideas, so medical students, COVID-19, online learning, three core ideas there, and I'll key them in separately into my search bar. So if we say medical student, for starters, what we can do is run a search. However, there's more we'll want to do here. Now, because we don't have a drop down to select the fields we want to search, if we do want to determine 
which ones are being queried, we need to specify at this point. And the way we do that is to put a full stop and then to put the abbreviation for the particular fields we want to look at. So if I wanted to look in the title and the abstract, I would put dot ti, comma, ab. Now you might very well say, well, how do I know what all of the abbreviations are? You will find a help option at the top here that will tell you all the different fields and all the different abbreviations. Nine times out of ten, though, you will probably use ti, ab, potentially mp, which is the general keyword search and is what's applied if you don't add a limiter on yourself, or perhaps tx, which should search, sorry, not tx, my fault, tw, which should, should search all text fields. So it's text word, it will do the title, abstract, and keywords. In any case, let me go title abstract with this one. And if I run my search, that will look it up immediately. So if we hit the search, you'll find your search history at the top here. If I expand this down, there we go. Let's run the search for me. Now you might say, Matthew, why didn't you put that in quotation marks? Whenever you use more than one word in a phrase, you would normally expect to enclose that in quotation marks to hold the terms together. Ovid is an anomaly in this case, in that it will assume quotation marks when you don't put them. So with most databases, it would look at a search like this and it would say the word medical and the word student, but not necessarily next to each other. They just want both of those words within the fields that you've decided to search. Ovid doesn't do that. When you put in something like medical student, it says those two words together in that order, nothing else unless you specify. So if we put in our next term, so we'll go COVID-19, and we'll say, just for a bit of variety, text word in this case, run the search, and then we'll put in our final idea of online learning. Now with online learning, this gives me an opportunity just to show you a couple of operators you might want to use. If you've got learning, you may also think, actually sometimes it could talk about learn, so we can put our truncation in there. Truncation can be either the dollar sign or the asterisk, you're probably more familiar with the asterisk, so I'll use that. What we might also say is that actually we don't want the term online learning to be restricted to just those words in that order with nothing else in between. At which point we might use proximity operator where we say we want the word online within a certain number of words of learn or learning or any of those variations. So in Ovid, proximity operator is done by using ADJ and then the number of words between which you will accept your two words appearing. Didn't explain that terribly well. So when we've got ADJ3, we have any papers with the word online and learning within three words of one another, any further apart and the paper won't come up for you. Hopefully that makes sense. I will also say at this point that these videos are really intended as a quick start guide. If you want more time spent on how to use the different operators, I have lots of different guides online. So if you were to come back to that initial LibGuides page that we found, you will see there is a library Blackboard space link on there. And there, there are a series of guides that walk you through how you might use these type of operators in more detail. But suffice it to say, for those of you who are familiar with that type of operator, this tells you how you would key in in Ovid. And then having put all three of my terms in, and this one I just left without a dot, so I've gone to mp, dot mp, which tells you here the fields that are searched when you do that. So it's broader than my other two lines. There we go. And what we can do, tick each of the lines, and we can then combine with an and, see any papers which have met all three of our criteria. So apparently that's 12. Not surprised because I didn't put in any alternative terms. So we've got a few there. As an example, that I think will get started. Now there are a few other things you might want to know how to do within Ovid. The first is probably to save your search and or to save your results. So within Ovid, you should have your own account space. If you see at the top here, there's a link to my account. Click onto this and you'll be asked to log in. Now, as with most databases, this is an account that you would set up yourself. So this won't be your UEA username and password. The first time you come in, you will have to click create account. Once you've done that, it's just a case of remembering your login. 
I'm panicking a little bit that I can't remember my password, but it, you should be just a case of doing that. So this login isn't what gives you access to like the full text of papers within here. This is just for storing your own references or your own searches. So create account the first time you come in, fill in the details, and then come back and log yourself in. So let's give this a go. I believe my username is just Matthew. My password is where I'm struggling. Okay, that's fine, let's log me in. So once I'm in, I've got my account and you see I have the options to mess around with the different settings there. But what we want to do is come back to my search, back to the search page, and we'll look at how we store things in the account. So let's say I was ever so proud of my three line search, or four line search even, and wanted to save that. What I'll do is select all the lines that I wish to save, because of course I may have had sort of trial lines in there that I decide to exclude. And what I can then do is click save. That then, let's just zoom that out a little bit, asks me to give the search a name. So let's just call it test search. If I were you, go with something more memorable, preferably with a date in there as well, so you know what you're looking at. You can search things for a temporary period. You can set up alerts, things like that. I won't discuss all that today. We'll just go with a permanent search. And you can also add yourself a comment if you want more detail about exactly what it is you're saving. So you've got save and configure or just save. Just save will be fine with this. Now that's saved our search. So whenever we want to re-look at that search, all we do, we come in, we make sure we're logged in, which we know we are in this case, and then we will find a view saved option in line with search history. So if I click view saved, it will pull up all of the different search strategies that I have saved in here. So, I'll, and actually these are examples of how you ought to put search, uh, the sort of names you, you, you ought to call them. These are not incredibly um, professional, but just people's names with the dates. Uh, where are we? So we have our test search. If we want to run it again, all we've got to do is tick the box. We do have the option to email it, to edit it, to view it, or to, actually don't know, I think that's a favorite button. But once we've ticked it, we then just hit the run up here and it will be rerun. Now, with longer search strategies, that can take a few minutes to actually process. Of it is noticeably slower than some other platforms. So don't worry, let it do its thing. It is almost certainly going to get there, um, even if it seems like it's stalled. The other thing you might want to do is add different records to a particular project folder. So I have to say, I don't do this an awful lot on Ovid. I tend to take things back to the library catalog and then store them in there. But if I wanted to, I should be able to click my projects and then it will ask me to create a project because I've not used one at all. So I'm again, going to do completely the wrong thing and give it a very generic name. But if we say add items, that will then be stored in my project. So we go to my projects. This again lives within my account. So I can access this at any point by going to my account and then you'll see at the top here, my projects. This is the only project I've ever saved in Ovid. It has the one item we've just added, and then I will be able to access this from wherever, whenever. Now, if I come back to my search page, the other thing you might be wanting to do is access the full text of papers immediately. For that, whenever you find a paper you like the look of, you should see a check UEA access button on the right hand side ordinarily. Click on this, and it will open up. Say ordinarily, because obviously if you're on mobile, things are going to look slightly different. But we say check UEA access, and this should then check against our holdings. And assuming we have access, which in this case, it looks like we do. In fact, it's an open access paper. It will pull you through to the right page where you'll be able to access either the PDF or an HTML version of the paper in most cases. If you ever hit papers where we do not have access, I would say come back to the guide. Everything points back to the guide. There is a quick link to request an article. So if we just don't have anything at all, you not anything at all, if we don't have the article you're after, you fill in your details there. We will go off and get a copy of the article if we're able to from a different library. Normally we will send it to you via PDF. We have a very excellent interlending team who take care of that. But any trouble with that sort of thing, do let me know. So those are the key things you're likely to want to do here. The only other thing that I want to flag is for those of you who might want to use index terms or subject headings. 
You may be used to using mesh terms on things like Medline or maybe on the Cochrane library. Embase doesn't use mesh terms, but it does use its own equivalent. So on Embase, you use something called mTree terms. To activate those, all you will do is in your search bar down here, type in a particular idea. So let's say I was looking for any mTree terms related to COVID-19. And before I hit search, I tick the button underneath that says map term to subject heading. Now I've left this till last because I realize it won't apply to everyone. But if we hit search, what we'll do is we'll find that the entry term for COVID-19 is coronavirus disease 2019. Now, I won't explain much more about index terms because they in themselves are a topic for a video. Again, you can go back and you can find those through my Blackboard space. But if we found the term we want, we click continue. We are offered subheadings. I very rarely use these on an example search. So here you'll see I've now got the COVID-19 M-base, oh sorry, M-tree term set up in my search. And you can identify subject headings and index terms because they have a forward slash at the end as opposed to a dot with some letters. So here, if I'd wanted then to build that into my search, I would just have clicked COVID-19 uh, text word, line number nine for coronavirus disease 2019, done and all. And then I could have added that combined group in with my other two terms around medical student and online learning. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Ovid isn't the most easy to use platform when you first come into it, which is why this primer has been just a little longer than some of the others I've put up. But I have to say it is one of my favorite search platforms. So yes, I am a librarian, and of course only a librarian could have a favorite search platform. But what that probably should tell you is that it is powerful once you get your head around the initial kind of interface and, and, and how you're gonna approach it. So I hope this has given you a head start. Of course, as ever, if you do get stuck and you want to have a chat about it, do feel free to drop me an email. My contact details are back on my LibGuide. As I say, everything points to the LibGuide, so you've got my details there. I also have drop-ins where you can have a chat with me at the moment remotely, but in, in other times, they're normally face-to-face. -face. So thank you very much, and I will see you at the next Database Primer.